but this is more than just a Department of Defense effort. The buildup here on Guam demands a whole of government integrated approach in which all federal agencies contribute. In this regard, we have been strengthening our existing interagency processes to ensure a properly coordinated effort that meets the requirements of the United States military and the government and the people of Guam. This whole of government effort is designed to look at how we, the federal government at large, can help Guam address issues existing today and plan for the future as the island's population and economy grows. The buildup must be a win-win process for the security of America and its allies and for the security and the well-being of Guam. It must not come at the expense of Guam's people and way of life. Rather, it should contribute to its development. It's essential that we get this right. The President is committed to making sure that we have a very realistic and sustainable approach to Guam. We speak of a vision, One Guam, Green Guam, that is designed to make sure we're investing in capabilities on Guam that are sustainable over the course of time, capabilities that are clean energy focused and take concrete steps to reduce the high price of energy on the island and will lead to a condition that's operationally and environmentally sustainable and also energizes the business environment here on the island. I'd like to highlight in particular the Department of Defense's interest in promoting planning and construction techniques that showcase energy-wise and environmentally compatible development. At the, as the federal government combines its resources and efforts to address Guam's needs inside and outside the fence line, we should make a concerted effort to do so in a way that makes Guam a showcase of renewable energy generation and efficiency. These efforts should serve as a model for visitors from around the world who will see America's best innovation, technology, and environmental stewardship on display. Success in Guam can also be shared with other islands in the region. All of this will align with President Obama's broader agenda for the ambitious promotion of green energy jobs and products. The buildup will no doubt have its challenges, but as I've heard Governor Camacho say before, there is an opportunity here to leave an inheritance to future generations. The buildup is about more than a military presence. It's also about expanding education and job, job training opportunities. It's about bringing new technologies to the island, green technologies and other innovative ideas spanning sectors and industries that will create and sustain the careers of future generations. In this regard, I tip my hat to President Underwood and his team here at the University of Guam. UOG intends to expand its courses, its degree programs, and its research capabilities so the young people of Guam are sufficiently prepared for expanded career opportunities that will result from this buildup. The university's plans for establishing a center for island stability constitutes extraordinary vision, a vision I hope is embraced by all residents of Guam. Let me conclude with a couple of last thoughts. The success of the military buildup on Guam is critical to the success of the United States' Asia policy and its strategy in the 21st century. As we pursue this effort, we have a deep commitment to the people of Guam to get this right, to execute our program without negatively impacting the island, its infrastructure, and its people. We have been working through the complex plans and issues associated with the buildup, and we are enormously grateful to the governor and the government of Guam, the Guam legislature, Congresswoman Bardalio, the island's mayors, and the many other leaders in private life and in business with whom we have worked and who continue to help us identify needs and solutions. We look forward to continuing the conversation in the immediate future. Thank you very much, and I await your questions. Thank you for that presentation. We've collected uh, several questions from the audience. Uh, the first one reads as follows. In the opening remarks, you mentioned that for the past 60 years, the U.S. has served as the guarantor of critical sea lanes in this region. 
During the past 10 years, however, we have witnessed increased threats of piracy in Southeast Asia and increased conflict over resource management in the South China Sea, the, the Philippine Sea, and the waters of the Indonesian archipelago. There's another side to this question. Okay, here we go. What is your office doing to address these non-traditional threats, and how would a buildup of strategic forces on Guam contribute to these immediate threats to peace and prosperity? That's a very good question, and the, uh, the rise of the so-called non-traditional threats, although piracy haven't been around since men first went to sea, uh, uh, makes it kind of odd to call it a uh, non-traditional threat. It is reappearing. Uh, not too long ago, the Malacca Strait, Southeast Asia, were the epicenter for piracy. Now it's moved temporarily, perhaps, to uh, uh, the Gulf of Aden, the North Arabian Sea, the Indian Ocean, and it's, uh, it's growing. It's getting worse. Uh, no one nation, including the United States, can patrol all the sea lanes by itself. Uh, we need to develop capacity in the other nations that are affected. Uh, perhaps one of the reasons why the epicenter of piracy moved over the past years from Southeast Asia to where we see it now is the growing efforts of Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, and other nations to uh, combat piracy in their uh, own areas. Philippine Sea remains a uh, problem uh, in the area where morning, where uh, Indonesia, the Philippines, and Malaysia intersect. Uh, we're moving to develop partnership capacity on that. This, this involves not only uh, actions at sea, there are various radars being set up cooperatively with the many different countries concerned to track uh, seaborne movement, uh, various patrol craft efforts being done. Uh, to be able to combat piracy. In addition to piracy, uh, we're also concerned about uh, other non-traditional threats to the livelihood of uh, coastal states, uh, certainly to island nations, and that's food security, which means fish. Uh, the Coast Guard, our Coast Guard in the Pacific has a uh, program they call Fighting for Fish, uh, or the Fight for Fish. Uh, this involves increasing uh, our surveillance of various ocean areas. Uh, it means arresting people who are fishing in these areas illegally, and that's ongoing. It means putting law enforcement detachments and other ship riders on not only Coast Guard ships, uh, Coast Guard vessels, but on U.S. Navy ships so that uh, arrests can be made when these, when these uh, illegal fishermen are found. It also involves uh, the questions that strategic uh, forces on Guam. Uh, there are strategic forces on Guam. One thinks of Anderson Air Force Base, uh, but the buildup that's going to involve other forces and other ships are more general purpose forces, and these forces are able to contribute uh, uh, greatly from Guam going to these other nations to help build the capacity to. Uh, for these nations to help counter these influences that we want to uh, uh, counteract that are moving across the Pacific. I might also add that uh, we're determined to increase our involvement with the, uh, with the compact states, the freely associated states, uh, with the Commonwealth of the Northern Marianas, with American Samoa, with Samoa, uh, and with other willing partners, uh, Tonga, Kourabas, and others, to combat the same thing to help protect uh, the fisheries by enforcing legal fishing to help uh, counter the movement of uh, in, in human trafficking moving across the Pacific, all of these things. And uh, Guam as a platform from which to deploy forces, uh, air, land, and sea, to work with all these different nations, large and small, to increase their capacity is one of the ways we hope to uh, tamp down both the terrorism and the piracy threat. And the two are related. The money that the pirates are getting for ransom of their huge vessels is going somewhere, and I don't think it's to one of the approved charities that we would like to see it go to. It's, it's funding our enemies.